Even though I'm making kimbap for dinner, kimbap was usually eaten as part of a packed lunch or toshirak for picnics or other outdoor activities. As a street food sold by street vendors, kimbap stalls and tteokbokki stalls might be right next to each other, or even the same stall, since people like dipping the rolls into the tteokbokki sauce for more flavor. I don't have the energy or the ingredients to make tteokbokki, so I'm hoping the kimchi that I'll eat with the kimbap will work as a spicy ingredient. Putting kimchi directly into the kimbap is another thing people like to do when making kimbap. Other ingredients to add are cheese, spam or luncheon meat, canned tuna, or bulgogi. We had spam in the cabinet, but I prefer keeping flavors light. The cheese, spam, and tuna in kimbap are another example of the influence from the US Army during the Korean War. A more well-known example of this is army stew, or putejige, which features these ingredients in addition to more traditional Korean ingredients. The cultural influence via food has come full circle. A college student in the US is enjoying Korean food with the limited skills she has in that cuisine. I'm surprised I was able to roll it without the bamboo roller or kimbap. Overall, I'm very satisfied with what I made. I like cutting off the ends for myself to eat before plating it nicely for the presentation. This is the completed kimbap. Time to eat!